Hi there guys and welcome back to SVC. So today I'm going to be making a apricot jam tart, uh, completely vegan. Now, this is a very simple recipe, very little equipment, very few ingredients. Uh, it's approximately five to six ingredients. Uh, very easy to make and it's not very time consuming. So the equipment that you're going to need is a sieve, a flan case, a pastry brush, a spoon, rolling pin, greaseproof baking paper, a sieve and a big bowl. You're also going to need bacon beans which is what I'm using these for over here. Now bacon beans, it's, they're used in what's called a blind baking process. It's effectively where you bake the flan case so it gets quite solid before you add the fillings. Uh, just so you're not adding fillings into sort of like soggy and getting soggy pastry. Um, now you can get bacon beans from the supermarket. They're usually about four pound a tub. I know as to sell them. However, as you can see over there, I've just used broth mix. Now, dried peas, um, sort of dried lentils, broth mix, or rice work just as well. So the ingredients you're going to need for this recipe is 100 grams of dairy-free butter, 65 grams of caster sugar three egg substitutes which is the flax eggs there now if you don't know how to make these I've done a tutorial and it's on my channel I'll link to it in the description um, 260 grams of plain flour plus a little bit extra just for dusting your bench when you go to roll your pastry and a jar of jam now I've used apricot however you can use any just switch it out for whatever jam you'd like I also have a little bit of milk here that's just for dust uh, that's just for rubbing across the pastry so it comes out with a lovely little bit of shine on it um, now this is oat milk, however you can use any milk substitute that you'd like, it all does the same job. So first things first for this recipe, what you want to do is to heat your oven to approximately 140 degrees. Uh, and this is for when you get on to doing the blind baking of your flan case for the, apple, for the uh, jam tart. Now a lot of recipes will say 180, I like to do it on 140 uh, as it cooks it through a little bit slower. Uh, I find on 180 a lot of the time the sides burn before the centre is cooked. So, if you depend on the heat of your oven, the type, you can play about and adjust the temperature, but I, base, I would base it on around 140 to 150 degrees. The next step is to cream your butter and sugar in a bowl. Now, to do this, you add them both at once, like so, and then really just sort of flatten that butter out and give it a good stir. Make sure that all of your butter and your sugar is incorporated. Um, the best test for this, to know if it's done, obviously all your sugar will have disappeared, just give it a hell of a mix, all your sugar will have disappeared and the way to know if your, your butter and sugar is creamed is when you feel it, it will feel like a sort of sand, it will feel like a very sandy texture, um, sort of like wet sand on the beach. So to me that still feels a little bit buttery, so I'm just going to beat that a little bit more. As you do it, obviously make sure you scrape your sides down to make sure all of the mix is in the bottom of the bowl. That way it incorporates a little bit better. Um, to do that, you could always use a spatula just to skim around the outside. However, usually your spoon suffices. So, so keep mixing, keep, cream, keep going until it creams the creams up. It'll sort of go a, a very light yellow. It'll go more from the buttery colour into a sort of lighter yellow once that's done usually take long, it's around one to two minutes of sort of hard beating into the butter and sugar. So feeling that, that feels a little bit like wet sand to me. So I'm going to stop creaming that now and go on to the next step. So for the next step, what you want to do is to add your flax eggs. Now you add these, the equivalent of one dairy egg at a time. So effectively, I have three eggs here for the mix. Um, like I said, if you don't know how to make these flax eggs, I have a video on my channel which shows you how to do them. It's actually these eggs. I made it just before the, the video just before this one. Um, so you want to add sort of a third of this mixing at a, at a time. And then you want to give it just a good stir. Make sure it incorporates. Get everything nice and mixed in. Again, make sure you're scraping down your sides there all the time. Make sure all of your mix is in so that you incorporate everything in there. So that looks like it's all incorporated and as you can see it's all gone together very nice so I'll add the next third of my egg I'll, and I'll start stirring that again scraping down the sides to ensure all of the butter all of the cream sugar is in there 
Uh, now the reason you don't add all of your eggs at once, all of your uh, flax eggs, is the same reason as when you make a normal pastry with dairy eggs. Is it tends to go very sloppy, and if you add it all at once, there's a good chance that the mix is going to split. And that sometimes you can save it by adding flour, mixing it up, and um, sort of trying a few different tricks. But it's easier just to avoid it in the first place. You get a much better final product at the end. So that's all incorporated. I'm going to add the final egg substitute there. And I'm going to give that a good mix in. Now you'll find after every addition of egg, your mix will get thinner. So it'll become easier to mix it through. So probably it'll take two minutes from your first egg, one for this to the next, and then 20 to 30 seconds for your final one. So again, make sure you finally you scrape down the sides just as a final measure. Give it a little quick mix, and then that's all incorporated. It'll look almost the sort of colour and texture of coarse grain mustard. Um, that's that's nothing to worry about. It's just the colour and the grain of the flax mixing through with your butter and sugar, and it gives a nice. It actually gives a nice little, little finish on the on the pastry at the end, um, as well as the, giving it a nice nutty flavour coming through from the flax there. So just a little view. This is what you want you want to end up with before you go on to your next step. It should look like uh, coarse grain mustard does in the jar. That's pretty much the closest comparison I can tell you for a view. So the next thing you want to do is to mix in your flour. Now, again, in the same way as the egg, I would mix this in a little bit at a time because every time you make pastry, you'll, you, you, your, weigh, your, your measurements and your weighs will be the same. However, it might take a little bit more or a little bit less to turn it into a bowl of dough. It really just depends on the mix, whether you've gotten your measurements right, and I think sometimes just whether the mix is feeling like coming together. So as you can see, you add it a little bit at a time, give it a good stir, get it all incorporated, make sure there's no lumps. Um, I've actually made a mistake there, the, sieve, the flour should be getting sieve, sifted in. So I'm just going to do that. So obviously from the start you want to be sieving your flour in. Give it a good, good mix. You can sort of see that it's starting to come together in a more solid mix. And again, you want to sieve a little bit more flour through. And just a little bit at a time, making sure to incorporate the flour fully before you add any more. Give it a good mix there. I'll just tilt that so you can see it in the camera. Now, when you get to this stage where it becomes really sort of hard to mix, really sort of sticky, you're not far off, so just be very careful with the amount of flour that you put in next. You may not need all of it, you may need to add a little bit extra. It's really just, when you finish your mix off, it's really just sort of judging it by eye and seeing what you think needs to go in. However, one thing I will say is it's always best to put less, th less than you think it needs in. Because if you have miscalculated or you've made a mistake, it's a lot easier to add a little bit extra flour than it is to fix a mix by letting it down with milk or water and whatnot. So, as you can see there, this is starting to come together into a lovely sort of dough. It's still a little bit sticky, so I'm going to add a little bit more flour in. However, that that's starting to come together very nicely. I should be able to just add the rest of this flour in in one go. Now again, you need a little bit of flour on the side when you start dusting your bench. I've kept that to one side. Um, you can take it out the bag, you can sort of leave a little bit in an extra tub, anything that works for yourself. So just really sort of finish off working it with your spoon. And if it doesn't come together, you always get your hands in, you can always mix it up. Um, if you're having problems getting your butter and your flour, so you sort of butter mix in there with your flour, just get your hands in and give it a good mix round. Uh, the reason being the heat of your hands will make, it'll, it'll melt the butter, make it a little bit more liquid, which makes it a lot easier to incorporate it as a dough. So you really just want to work it through with your hands. Get all of the flour in, all of the mix sucked in. See that's still a little bit sticky, it may need a little bit extra flour. We'll just keep working it and see how it goes. But that is pretty much almost ready. So you really just want to push it into the bottom of your bowl, use the sides, make sure you're skimming all the mix, all of the flour off to form a ball of dough. Now that needs a little bit extra flour and that will be ready to go. So I'm just going to add that right now. So I've just saved the last little bit of my flour in, that should be enough just to incorporate it into the mix. 
Really, you just want to take the stickiness away and make it almost a sort of bread dough. Uh, as you can see, that's taken in the last of the flour. I've added a little bit too much in, so I'm just going to skim that off into my dusting tub. And then really sort of work it. Make sure you get all of that incorporated into the mix. Really go for it, knead it, push it into the sides until it comes together into your pastry. So the next step, you want to take some uh, flour from your dusting tin and just lightly dust your bench like so. Little sprinkle just so your pastry comes together. Just so it doesn't stick. I find it's easier to incorporate the final bit on the bench than in the dough. So you just want to get it on your work surface, tiny little bit of flour. Always brush the excess off when you think it's too much. And really just work it with your hands. Just so it comes together, you incorporate all the flour. And it's more like a sort of dough than a sticky mess. Now, you sort of, if you sort of round it with your hands like so, get a nice little ball, cross your hands, push down and pull roll forward at the same time. It's a lovely sort of little way to knead it, gets all of the stuff incorporated nice and mixed. Now as you can see there, we have a lovely ball of pastry. So your next step in this recipe is to take a little bit of flour and just dust the bowl. Just very, very lightly, you don't, want to add, you don't want to add too much or you'll ruin your flour mix. Add, sorry, add your pastry, you'll ruin your pastry. You add your pastry to it, like so. And then just add a tiny, tiny little bit of cling film over the top. Just to keep it covered. And really just push it down. Just so it's sort of nicely, loosely covering your pastry. And what you want to do is to put that in the fridge and chill it for around 30 minutes. Right. So once the pastries come out of the fridge, you want to lightly dust your bench again like before. Not too much. Tip your pastry on. Give it a little rub down. Push down with the palm of your hands just like that, just so it gets a little bit of a... Uh, a sort of shape, put it in a circle and then you just want to pin it out thin. Once your flour sort of starts to wear off, just flip it over, dust your flour back under and then carry on. If it's a bit thick on the sides and a little thin in the middle, just use your fingers to press it down. And then again, just pin it out just so you've got enough to fit over your air, uh, your tart case. Way to know is if you put that in the middle, you'll have a sort of nice little bit of overspill around your tart case on all sides. So as I can see from here, that bit needs to be put over a little bit more. So you just want to roll that out a tiny bit, and then you've got it all there. The excess around the outside, once you've put your tart in, you don't want to throw that away, because that's going to be your lattice. So next up, you just need a little bit of greaseproof paper and a little bit of excess butter, and you want to grease your tray. Just get a nice cover on it. Don't try not to leave any, even if it's non-stick, I would still grease it because the pastry can still bake into any sort of scratches or cracks or just really anything that, um, really anything it can bake into. So it's better just to do the whole thing. I normally pop this out and grease around here as well because where the little cracks are under here, sort of when it's slotted in, you can see a little bit of a rim around the sides there. Uh, it can still bake into there as well. So the next thing you want to do is first of all, take your pastry up, if you can get, if you can sort of fold it over in half and just put your hand under and then just drape it over. Make sure you've got a lovely little bit of overspill on either side and then you've got your pastry case. Now if you pop a little bit of the pastry off, cover that in flour so it doesn't stick and then what you want to do is work your way around, lifting this side up and simultaneously pushing in into the cracks here. And what that'll do 
is it'll form the shape into the corners without you pushing down with your fingers. If you push down with your fingers, it's likely to rip and you'll have to patch it up. Uh, and that's never good for getting a, a sort of very nice bake, because once your filling goes in, it could go through that crack and it could stick. And then obviously once it's stuck, it's really hard to then get your case out. So again, all the way around, just lift up. Once it's lifted up, just put your floured pastry in, little pastry ball, that pushes everything down. Gets everything sort of nice and flush to the corners and the sides. Just one quick little dab back round just to make sure it's all in. Little push on the sides, very light. So that's all coated and a little push on the top and that's all nice and shaped. So to trim the excess pastry off, you just need a knife. And what you want to do is just sort of very gently get your hand under, just so it's hanging off the side. And use the little, just use the side of your um, pastry tin as your guide and just very, very carefully cut round the outside. The reason you've got to do it really carefully is any sort of slight slip or, or tear and um, your pastry will sort of jump back and recede on, back onto the tray. Now make, when you're doing this make sure you leave a little bit of an overhang so you can push it back out so that it doesn't recede while it's baking. So as you go just trim this down. And again, make sure you keep this excess pastry, you're going to need that later. Just trim round, get it all cut. As rough as you like, because you're going to reshape all this in a second. Just be very careful that you don't rip it. So once that's done, you want to just use your thumbs to slightly pinch all of this back over the edge. Just so that you haven't got any exposed tray. And that'll stop it sort of pulling in on, its, on itself after you're cooking. Now if you have any parts like this where it's coming in a little too far, you just want to get your tiny little bit of pastry and just bond that on just so it's nice and flush and then push that out too. And you'll have a nice little seam there which will cover it up. So your next step, you want to get some greaseproof paper and scrumple it up. The reason you scrumple it up is when you unravel it, it will shape to the case a lot easier. And the same sort of concept as before, you want to push it into the edges very, very lightly, just so that it forms to the shape of the pastry case that you're making, like so. Don't worry about these bits spilling over, that's not really an issue. And then the bacon beans I showed you earlier, as I was saying, you can use rice, dry dentils, anything, I'm using soup mix. Just sprinkle that in, making care that you don't get any stuck to the pastry. I'm going to need a few more there. Luckily I've got some barley to hand, that's another one you can use. As long as there's enough weight on it. And the good thing is, once this is done, you can put them into a pot, maybe label it baking beans, and you can use them again. So once that's there, you've got to just make sure they're all spread into the edges. Make sure you've got a nice even cover and just give it a little shake just so it's all covered up. Then you want to add it to your preheated oven and cook it for approximately 10 minutes. Just check it every few minutes just to make sure that it's not browning too much. So in the meantime, while your pastry's blind baking, while it's cooking, you want to reflower re your bench, bring all of your excess together, reincorporate it, just make sure there's no little breaks or seams and it's one big little bit of dough. Now you do that with the way I showed you before, just cross your hands, push forward, incorporate it all so it's nice and nice and stuck into one nice little big pile of dough. Keep flour on your bench just a little bit just so that you don't get anything sticking. So once you've got your pile of dough, same as before, just press round just so you get your basic round shape so you don't get an irregular roll. And then again just start pinning it out. Remember to keep rotating it so that you get a nice circle. And that way you'll get everything as an even thickness. Again, if it does sort of branch, uh, uh, thicken up on the sides like mine has, you can always just press it back down. And keep flour on your bench. Now 
Now you really, realistically, you want to try and only pin this out again once. It's already pinned up, been pinned out before. Um, and the more you roll it back up and, and pin it out, your pastry will deteriorate. So if you get this right sort of the first time, it'll come out very, sort of very nice. If it does do that and rip, just a bit of flour, push it back down. And then again, keep pinning it out. Now you want it slightly thinner than the crust on your pastry case. About that thickness. And then you're ready to cut your lattices for the top of the flan case. So now that you've got your pastry pinned out, you want to cut your strips for your lattice. So I'm going to go lengthways just because it's longer that way and I don't want to come short by doing it sideways. So I've got a palette knife, this wasn't on the equipment list. Uh, you can use anything that will cut really, it's just that this won't damage the bench when you cut through. So you really just want to trim the edges off just so that it's not rounded. And you get a nice little straight sort of strip and you want to cut in about half a centimetre thick so uh, sorry half a centimetre wide now I'm probably going to get two strips out of one lengthways but depending on what size you pin it out to it may differ for yourself so I'm just going to put that up there I'll trim that down later once I have the size of my cook flan case and then again just continuously cutting the strips down um, you should end up with about 10 strips all together another quick little tip as well for when you're cutting down here now I don't have one in my house at the minute uh, due to an unfortunate smelting accident um, but you can use a pizza cutter to cut down this as well and you get some very accurate cuts um, so if you have a pizza cutter to hand as obviously most people do you can just use a pizza cutter and just run straight down, loads of quick strokes, no cutting necessary and you'll have your um, you'll have your lattices very easily that way. So once you've got your lattices cut, as you can see here, nice and stripped out on a flowered bench so they don't stick, your pastry should be out. Now if I just get a close up on here, you should be able to see it's just say started to brown but it's, very, it's still crispy but it's still very very pale. Now, that's the way you want it to be, because once you put it back in, you don't want the pastry to overcook. So you really just want a very sort of pale, sort of blonde looking pastry for now. Now, again, lift the bacon beans out, taking care not to drop any of them onto the pastry itself. Just looking lovely. And then what you want to do is just grab yourself a cooling wire and just put this on the cooling wire and as soon as this is cool you can carry on with the rest of your recipe once your pastry case is cooled you want to add a tiny splash of water just like a couple of tablespoons into a bowl with your jam give that a good stir the reason being it will break it all down make it nice and fluid so you can pour it in it won't be nice and it won't be like really jelly and clumped up in the pastry case as you put it in and that's sort of how you get your pastry ribbon as you sort of dig in and spread it out sort of maintain the pastry up to this point you don't really want to be ripping it so give that a good stir I'm actually going to add a little bit extra jam into there um, just because I'm not convinced that that's enough tiny bit more jam and you really want sort of I think this is a litre and a half sort of capacity bowl. You really want sort of half of this full. Then you want to take your flan case and literally just pour the jam through. Just in a circle, just so you get a lovely spread on it there. Scrape your, scrape your bowl down so all you're nice and covered. You've got everything in there. And then spread it around with the, the back of your spoon. Just so you've got a lovely even coating. Then take, take the back of your spoon once again. Right round the sides. And then just 
across the side just to even it out and then you want to just take your flan case and give it a little shake and that, that'll finally flatten it to a nice little level. So next you want to take your milk and your pastry brush. Again, you can have any milk substitute, um, soy, almond, this is oat, um, coconut, any will work. It's literally just to get a stick. So just round the outside, just nice and light. Just rub the excess off your brush before you go around or you'll get what I've done here where you get a little bit of milk into the jam. So just excess off. Follow yourself around the outside. Just get it nice and wet with your milk. And once that's done, you want to take your lattices and start lying them over the top. And really just sort of lightly press it just so it touches the top of the jam. And then when you hit the sides, just pinch just very lightly so you're not cracking your already cooked pastry and just give it a little tap into the milk so it becomes flush with the rest of the pastry and then finally you just want to take a knife and just very carefully trim the excess off now you want to do that all the way around so all the way in strips so you've got a full side and then you need to do it again lengthways once you've got your first side in you just want to turn it and then start on your second side so again, nice little light touch so it forms into that pastry. Just trim the sides off with a knife or your fingers as I'm doing. Just get it nice and covered. And as you can see, it's starting to form a very, very nice lattice shape. And you really just want to carry this along all the way down and then it'll be ready for the oven. I'll just give you a close up on this there. This is your full lattice effect done. Nice little crisscross, everything pushed in, going to be cooked lovely. The last thing I'm going to do is very, very carefully sort of, again, take my milk, scrape all the excess off, and just very carefully, very lightly brush down the lattices, just to get that little bit of a shine. Now you want to put that in for 15 to 20 minutes. Again, check it every 5 minutes because pastry could cook faster or slower. Um, and for this, you want to knock your oven up to approximately 180 degrees. So if you had it on 140 for your blind bacon, you want it on between 170 and 180. So this is the finished product out of the oven. Um, lovely looking apricot tart. I'll just give you a close up there, as you can see. Nice little lattice effect. Although uh, I've gone wonky as hell. Wonky, yeah. Um, but a lovely little lattice effect. Nice and cooked. Um, a nice little, uh, nice little tart, basically. So what you want to do, once it's came out of the oven, is put it onto the, ow, oh, that's hot, um, put it onto the cooling wire, and just leave it there for approximately 30 to 40 minutes just to cool down. And once it's completely cool, you can start serving it up. So here we have the final product. This is your apricot tart. Just a lovely little bit of kiwi fruit and uh, an apple just draped around the side there and drizzled underneath before you add them to the plate is a little bit of raspberry coulis. And I've just dusted that with a tiny bit of icing and sugar. I also have a link in the description to how to make that raspberry coulis underneath the tart as well. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you check out my other videos. Hopefully this helped you a lot. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe and we'll see you next time on SVC.